Hello and welcome to another episode of the Sustainable Funding Vlogcast Series for Creatives, Technologists and Educators. I'm your host Erica Hargreave and I'm super excited because in today's episode we welcome a new sponsor. Uh, so in addition to BCIT, we've had Grant for the Web join us in this series. And Grant for the Web is specifically funding um, a number of episodes that we're gonna be hosting with different creators that are using uh, web monetize the web monetization standard. And so, and we have one of those creators that's gonna be joining us on this episode, Adam, who has created a new social media platform that is web monetized called GFAM. And so Adam and I are gonna to be totally nerding out to everything uh, around the web monetization standard in this episode, sort of explaining a little bit about what it's all about, what blockchain's all about, um, how cryptocurrencies like XRP are tied into it, and uh, why there's a need for it with, uh, with the web being a little bit broken uh, for creators at the moment. And so, yes, I invite you to join Adam and I on this episode. It looked like it was, it was that space where they're also trying to help out communities that have traditionally been disadvantaged. Yeah, I think it's unfortunate that the internet has become a place that it's kind of been dominated by a couple of companies. Uh, and we need to wrestle that back for the people. I love that. Hey, uh, my name is Adam. Uh, I've been in the web monetization space for a little bit. Uh, maybe a year or so, uh, probably been in like the blockchain space for two or three years. I find it super, super interesting. Um, and yeah, I have uh, got a project that I'm running at the moment called gfam.live, which really is looking into web monetization and alternative methods to help creators fund their lifestyles with their content without selling out to like advertisements or brands or you know creating merch and all that sort of stuff so yeah I'm just a person who's very excited about this space just a guy you're talking about gfam being sort of a web monetization platform what what exactly like what is gfam what does that mean we'll share in that yes. space so uh gfam is designed to be a bit more of a, a storytelling um application so basically I had a ton of friends, uh, mainly in like the Ninja Warrior space, which is like a, a TV show, like an obstacle course TV show where people would, you know, be training and be creating like all this amazing content that have hundreds of thousands of followers on Instagram and TikTok and whatever. Um, but they were always like super poor. Like they just couldn't afford anything because they're like working at these gyms for like minimum wage. Um, and spending a lot of money like going to competitions and traveling around and all that sort of stuff so I was like all right so this system isn't working for my friends they're so popular they're creating so much great work and yet they're not making any money from that so gfam is really to kind of help them out um and so it's a platform where people can share a story or a lesson or a life struggle or a highlight or just you know something about themselves and their supporters their audience their friends can support them just for their content not because they're advertising something uh so yeah so gfam is a platform where people can receive tips uh using block blockchain technology or the web monetization side where people can buy a subscription for five dollars a month and then whoever whichever content creator they spend time on that person gets these micro payments in the background so if you create a post, which you have on GFAM, which has been excellent, when I spend time on your post, then you get these micro payments. And so it's just a way for people to earn from their content. And when you sort of went to set up GFAM, were you always setting it up with the whole idea of web monetization in mind as kind of 
I, background to the platform? I actually and wasn't. You, uh, sorry, I'm laughing. You froze for a second there with your mouth like a... <laughs> <laughs> I like to choose the moment in which I freeze. And it's just like... <laughs> um, no, I actually, I actually completely pivoted once I learned about web monetization web monetization so the original plan for the platform was for people to create their posts and then opt in to whether they wanted like a banner advertisement um and so if they did then the plan was that they would get like we you know we do some algorithms in the background but like based on how many views and stuff people got they would get essentially 80 percent of the advertising dollars directly to them as opposed to instagram which might be like I don't know, 1% or YouTube, which is a very small amount, like people were getting the majority of the advertising dollars. Um, but advertisements are annoying. They're becoming more annoying, more flashy, more loud, more distracting. So once I found out about web monetization, that fit way better with our mission than uh, having ads. And, you know, maybe at some point we will have ads, but really what I'd like to direct companies and brands into is something that I like to call like micro motivating. So, you know, like say like a Nike or someone could give everyone a tip if they're wearing one of their products in their content or, you know, something like that where 10,000 people get a dollar each as opposed to one influencer gets $10,000 for talking about products and stuff. So that's something I'd like to go towards in the future, but really I just want to help people earn from their content, especially since, uh, you know, automation is becoming a huge thing, especially in the retail space, transport, manufacturing. Uh, the pandemic obviously has restricted a lot of people. So my friends that are Ninja Warriors that are like working in these gyms haven't been able to work. So now like GFAM is becoming more important, you know, unintentionally. When you first started, what was your model for, for funding the, the company and GFAM? Like, is it just you or do you have a team that works with you? Uh, so I'm not super technical. Um, so I spent like a year trying to learn like coding and stuff, but GFAM is bleeding edge technology. It's really complex. So essentially like out of my own savings, I had to like spend money on developers and people to help me and stuff. Um, and then once uh, I got a grant from Grant for the Web, I was essentially able to fund that with that grant. Um, so yeah, I've got people helping me, um, but kind of the, I don't know, like I kind of see GFAM as not this way for like me to make a lot of money. Like, honestly, I'd be happy if GFAM is just sustainable in terms of web monetization. So essentially pays for its server costs. Mm -hmm. And then creators, including myself can, live their life on that platform so the platform doesn't really need to make any money the creators need to make money for it to be successful yes but i'm imagining you have costs associated with it like with your 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 team behind behind the scenes um and so how how does that work how are you going to make that sustainable yeah, so because of the grant, I don't feel like I necessarily need to make it sustainable. I just need to build the product and then the running costs after that can be sustainable through web monetization. Okay. So the, the way that it works is when you post on GFAM and I look at your post, then you get those micropayments. Mm -hmm. But if someone else posts on GFAM and they don't have web monetization set up, they're only there to collect tips, then GFAM gets the micropayments if you look at their post. So when GFAM receives those micropayments, that will go into paying for server costs and that kind of like maintenance costs. So yeah, so like, you know, the grant has given this us this amazing gift of not needing to be profitable or even sustainable, which is really incredible. So I'm guessing then too, if you're on the main page and you're just sort of scrolling through people's thumbnails, yep. then then you're you're getting the the micro payments then too from. That's it. That's exactly right. That's correct. Yeah. If you spend time watching the video that I put on the main page, then I'm getting the micro payments for all that to pay for server costs and stuff. Being a bit newer on on sort of web monetizing my content and uh, not having a platform where I have you know a lot of you know have 
have sort of a community there. I, yeah. I'm curious. So just just in terms of sustainability with that. So we've been doing monthly reports where I yeah. am super transparent. So in the monthly reports, there are like cost breakdowns and all that sort of stuff. Um, but the intention is, is that as people come onto the platform, because they have an audience that really wants to support them, they would help us sell these coil um, subscriptions, mm -hmm. um, which I think is an easier sell than like, hey, buy my merch or buy like this Absolutely. product. It's like, hey, just spend $5 and you're supporting everyone on the platform based on the time that you spend. So my hope is, is that the people who come onto GFAM bring subscribers, which then helps us support the platform. Yeah. yeah. And now is, um, have you been able to track any of that yet? So like uh, where to see how many people from, from GFAM are, are signing up for COIL and how many of their friends are signing up or? Uh, no, we haven't. Like I can tell you that, you know, in the eight months or whatever, we've made like, I think it was like $260 out of the micro payments. Mm -hmm. um, it's in it's in a monthly report, um, yeah. but yeah, I mean the most most of the activity is through tips, and we yeah. don't take any kind of fee or cut from that. It mm. all like it it all just happens between the consumer and the content creator. Um, so yeah, we haven't made a lot. Um, we might have only just covered our server costs, um, but yeah, because of the grant, I'm just not too stressed about it. Um, but yeah, obviously not everyone has a grant. Um, and you know, like if you have web monetization set up on your site, you can still have advertisements. It's, you know, it's not designed to completely uh, remunerate you, but it might help supplement uh, until we get a bigger push for people to, you know, want this more fair internet where people are paying for the content that they're enjoying through subscription models. Yeah. There's a massive cultural shift with that because people believe that they're getting a lot of content for free, but they're not really. There's a cost. No, yeah. no it, it's interesting. I, I I was having a conversation before we, we before our call. Um, I sort of sparked in this open educational uh, community a conversation about uh, drawing eyes to people's content because it's been something that I've been seeing as a massive, massive deficit in that community. You've yes. got all these people who are building open ed con content, but most of them don't have any clue as to how to get it to the teachers and the homeschooling families that could use it. Yeah. And so I started this conversation sort of as a part of open educational week that they're there and one of the first comments that I got back was like, you know, the whole concept that getting eyes is just about self-promotion. And I'm like, uh, no, <laughs> <laughs> um, this has nothing to do with ego or self-promotion. What it has to do with is if you're creating great content uh, and, and this, I see this so much with my students and people like that out there. And it's exactly what you were hitting on earlier is the people who are creating great content but unless you've got an audience and unless you know and then secondarily because that was my other conversation that I started in that community this week was on sustainable funding yeah unless there's people that um unless there's a way that you can make then that that content creation sustainable it it makes it very difficult for for a storyteller for a content creator to to make a living unless there's some sort of big backer behind what they're doing. I mean, I think their comment was fair because if you ask most teachers, they're like, oh, I'm in it for the attention. Like no teacher ever talks about like shaping young minds or helping people learn things. They're like, no, I love the attention, the captive audience of those 30 kids in the class every day. Like, you know what teachers are like. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, so... <laughs> So we were talking monetization and I know that when I first, um, you know, was reading about until I really started diving down into what Grant for the Web was about. Um, when I first read web monetization, I'm like, oh, so like, is this like about, you know, web advertising or, or, you know, other ways that people are monetizing on the web, whether it's Patreon or, um, yeah. or, or, uh, yeah. or, 
like affiliate links. Um, so, so whereas what you're talking about is different than that. Do you mind just sort of ex explaining of what? So basically, um, you know, we have a huge problem on the internet with things like fake news and clickbait and advertisements, like spending any, like, spending any time on the internet it feels like i'm just dodging advertisements whether it be like youtube videos or podcasts uh like you can block out the ads but then people you know like with podcasts are always talking about like let's thank our sponsor and then they've got to talk for like you know two minutes about like a product or whatever in the middle of their content and so advertisements have always super annoyed me because i don't want to see that like that's not part of what i'm doing monetization is really about um people essentially paying for the content that they consume so like coil for example i pay five dollars um and that means that i get access to people's content plus their bonus content plus videos on cinnamon plus i get to use imgo without or imager without ads um and hacker noon i get extra content so there's all these different things that i uh, have access to because I pay this $5 a month. It means no commercials, no ads or anything. And I love that. I think that's a brilliant model. Um, so that's really all web monetization is. It is the technology behind um, allowing all these different companies to get slices of my $5 through the time that I spend. So when I go to Imgur, Imgur however it's pronounced, um, I spend time there and I'm looking through all like the memes and stuff and they're getting micro payments in the background and then I can immediately flip to someone's cinnamon video and then they're getting the micro payments from my subscription. So of the $5 a month, I think it's like $4.33 goes to all the creators that I spend time with and the remainder goes to, to Coil. Um, so that's really all web monetization is. It's just a more fair way for people to um, be paid for the content they're, they're, that they're producing. And so like, I don't know if like you get annoyed with like videos or podcasts or whatever, where they have to kind of break up the story that they're telling to advertise something that doesn't really seem true to their values or whatever. Um, yeah, I, I, I hate that interruption. I just want the content that I want. Um, and people do feel that like they get all this content for free on social media, but they're not really like everyone knows that our data is being sold and unsold and all that sort of stuff. But there's also the element of people being unaware of how much they're influenced by all this tracking and by all these ads. Um, and, you know, clickbait and fake news is a whole separate thing, but that, that influence is actually massive people are totally unaware with how much they're influenced by everything they see on the internet constantly, continuously. Uh, so yeah, so web monetization hopefully actually solves a huge number of issues, including hopefully fake news. Yeah, well, I mean, and certainly on the news, I mean, I one of my hats is, is as a journalist and I know that, uh, you know, slowly we've been chipping away at yeah. our just, you know, raw form of journalism where where somebody goes out and creates a story that has no sort of yeah. sponsor associated with it. Yeah. I mean, um, I, th I think I think news is in a huge problem area, like all the venture capital firms buying up local newspapers. Um, well, a lot of, and a lot of, um, like, for example, the travel section of a lot of newspapers, which I think a lot of people don't realize, um, most of those travel departments at the yeah. newspapers have been basically closed down and all the content that's come in the newspaper is bought news content, sorry, paid for it, sponsored news content around travel. Right, right. And so that's like, that's a big deal as well. And I've been, I've been uh, kind of working a lot with influencers at the moment. Um, and it is like, there's so much out there that we don't realize that is being sponsored or paid for. Um, you know, like I know on Instagram and Facebook and YouTube and stuff, they, they have to say like sponsored post or whatever. But 
I still don't think that happens nearly as much as it should happen. Um, and so like, unfortunately we need to ask ourselves like, what is the motivation of this person telling me this thing? Do they truly love this product or are they being paid for it? And I feel like web monetization takes that question completely out because mm -hmm. someone is just creating content and you're consuming content and that's the only relationship that matters. There's no yeah. other parties trying to, to, you know, ransom your eyeballs or whatever. And I know part of the beauty for me uh, is that as somebody who creates content, I'm my skill is not in asking for money yes, and i yes. would kind of feel slightly like Awkward. i've never i've never yeah. done that on our sites because i don't i mean yes i know that there's stuff that i create that's of value however i just i've i've never felt quite right about about asking for yeah. for for people for money for it but by, um, but by that same token if you were working for a company and that company asks you to create content, you would expect to be paid for Absolutely. that effort. If you had a nine to five and you were spending eight hours a day creating content, like you would be paid for that time, for that value that you're bringing to the company. Absolutely. Yet, when we do it on our own time, we don't expect that same level of remuneration. No, it, but it, it's like, I mean, for me, it, I'm, I'm saying this as a positive because it's, it's one of the things I love about, about the, the way this web monetization is, is worked out yeah. is I, I don't have to ask for it. And I don't have a problem at the same time telling people that, you know, hey, this content is monetized, is, is, is monetized using COIL. And if you want to help support different content creators on the web, you can go and purchase a $5 membership. And I, I haven't done it yet with any of our content so far that, that I've been sharing, but it's something I am going to do at some stage of the game where there'll be certain, you know, content that is exclusive for, I yes. just have to decide which content. Um, yeah. And so. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think that's completely fair. Um, on Coil, I like I was creating content directly on Coil for a long time, and yeah. now I've got my own website. Um, but on Coil, I was creating like these comic comic books, um, and so I would like there were always like these battles and stuff, and so I'd kind of put that's like the cool. first few. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. I, I'd put the first few frames and like you know context to the story. And there's like, well, if you want to see the entire comic book, you need to have a Coil subscription. And I really love that model because like people are getting something out of the content. Like Absolutely. at the very least, they get to see the first few frames or whatever. And then, but there is that motivation to help support everyone, not just me. Um, you know, it's providing that benefit because it is a hard balance to basically say like, here's a lot of content that I'm putting out for free here's some content that's kind of gated um, and the balance of like, well, you don't want to make everything gated because then no one even knows what you're capable of, Yeah. but you don't want to give everything for free because then why does anyone need to support you when they're getting it for free? So yeah, it's a tough yeah. balance, but you'll work it out. Like, you know, it's all trial and error essentially. Yeah. Um, well, I've been noticing on some people's, um, uh, you know, different coil posts and stuff like that, where, you know, about you, you know the first portion of the article is is yep. is free and then there's like added layers yeah. of some some bonus, stuff like, yeah if you want three more tips you know yeah become yeah. a coil subscriber yeah and i like i love that as a model that i feel like there's something for everyone in that um and uh as of uh, i don't know four days ago we actually included gated content on um gfam as well Oh, I missed that. I, I've been I've been negligent this week. <laughs> I mean, there's so much changing all the time. You, yeah. It's impossible to keep up with everything. That's why I'm here. Um, and basically, like this was kind of designed for you know people like personal trainers were the people I had in mind, where they would give like a whole workout routine, but you have to tip like five XRP in order to open that. So they're not giving all their content away for free. Um, you know, like the main part of GFAM is for people to kind of like motivate, like, oh, I really enjoyed your post. So I'll give you a tip to motivate you to create more content like that. Mm -hmm. But now we've got the option to basically say, hey, this content is so good. 
that I would I would want you to tip me five XRP to see it. Um, and so, yeah, we've been playing with that and that's been uh, really well received. I didn't expect people to like that concept as much as possible. I thought, I actually thought people would kind of be angry at us. Um, but yeah, like I think, I think there's opportunities there for people to really hopefully sustain their lives through the content and the value that they add to the internet. Oh, absolutely. No, and I, I was, it was getting me excited just now because especially with the sort of exercise hook in there, um, I was thinking of uh, Lori and her daughter, Brooklyn, and, uh, and their sort of all their yogi posts that they've been doing yeah. on Instagram. And I'm like, oh, should, yeah. Yeah, should, yeah. So should gently so nudge them in the direction of GFAM. Yeah, so basically they could post uh, like some really good stuff on Instagram and then say like, hey, if you want more detail or like we've got a special thing, it's over on GFAM um, and it costs like five XRP or whatever to unlock it. And I know no one knows of XRP, but hopefully that'll change. Like I see all this as like a very long journey uh, yeah. full of education. So yes, at the moment, no one knows what it is, but people do know what Bitcoin is. So, you know, eventually we'll get there. I know that but uh, we will have some people who are listening <laughs> who uh, likely know very little about blockchain and Bitcoin and XRP. Yep. Do, you, do you mind sort of, because I mean, that's the framework which a lot of these micropayments are based on. And yep. so yep. do you mind sort of uh, uh, indulging indulging us with I your, your expertise? Do. I do not mind. So uh, let me preface this with uh, just a little example on PayPal. So because I've been building my site and I've been using help from different people, I've been using PayPal to pay them for their services. And so when I do that, so um, one of my friends helped me with the design. So, you know, logos and stuff. He's in the UK. So I paid him via PayPal. And so PayPal gives you a very special PayPal exchange rate, which is not the same as the actual exchange rate. So I paid him like, I think it was a couple of thousand dollars, but basically like, I think it was like, I paid $300 more because of their exchange rate. And then he got, I think he said like $150 less because of the exchange rate on his side, plus the fees that I pay to PayPal plus the fee that he had to pay as well. So like of the money that I sent, he did not get 100% of that money. He got a lot less than that. And I paid fees on top of that. So that's fair enough. I have no problems with that because that is an amazing service. Like I sent him money and he gets that. I don't have to go to banks and do wire transfers and all that sort of stuff. So that is a thing that exists. Um, but on GFAM, people aren't spending thousands of dollars, you can tip someone for like less than a cent, right? So um, in order to do that, like PayPal would never accept a transaction of one cent because their fees are so much more than that. So that's why we've used blockchain technology because XRP, it takes three seconds. It goes from my account to your account in three seconds and there's absolutely no fees. Um, so it's a completely free thing. It's super quick. There's no one in between. Um, actually last week, PayPal, um, killed my account for four days as part of like the Australian government, like needs to do checks and stuff. So I couldn't pay anyone for four days and completely disrupted my business. And there was nothing I could do about that on the blockchain. There's no central party. Like it's all basically the way blockchain works is that let's say a hundred people have different servers and they all have to agree that like, yes, this is the real transaction or yes, this is the real file. We all agree this is the number one file. So that all happens really quickly and um, it essentially happens for free for us. So it's an incredible technology that isn't easy to hack. Um, block, uh, Bitcoin, for example, is blockchain, blockchain technology that's all about money. And so to hack Bitcoin, you would need to hack, I think it's something like two and a half thousand different servers in 10 minutes in order to disrupt Bitcoin, uh, which seems really hard. Uh, blockchain technology exists purely to stop people from copying and pasting digital files. That's really all it's for, is to stop copy and paste by saying, this is the authentic real version or real file. Um, 
uh, and they do that by saying like all these people are connected and they all agree that this is the one file that's the real file. Um, so yeah, I know that was probably confusing and not well thought out, <laughs> but that's what blockchain is. So basically when with, with web monetization, uh, there's, um, you're opening up a digital wallet in order to be able to access, you yes. know, financial transfers through through the blockchain. Yeah. And so within yeah. within that, what is XRP? So XRP is one of thousands of different cryptocurrencies, um, but XRP is super quick and has no fees. So what that means is that from a micro payment point of view you might get, you know, if I look at your content for a second, then you just might get like 0 0.0006 of an XRP in your wallet. And, you know, that's not very much money. It's not even a cent. Um, but if lots and lots of people do it and lots and lots of people spend time on your content, that really adds up. So I think, oh, I can't remember. Um, I think if, if I spend an hour on your content, then you get like 35 cents worth. Um, but if lots of people spend lots of hours on your content, that really adds up really quickly. Um, so yeah, so XRP is just one of the different types of cryptocurrencies. Um, it's super quick because uh, that consensus model that I was talking about um, basically means a bunch of different computers have to agree on, you know, the official transaction and all those people are volunteers. So they've set up their servers because they really want this network to work really well. They've got a vested interest. So Coil has a server, different university have servers, uh, just random people have a server and they all have to agree on what the official transaction is. Um, so because they're volunteers, it means that it's completely free for me to send you money and vice versa. And that's why I can be so quick um, blockchain, uh, sorry, Bitcoin takes quite a bit longer because um, there's thousands and thousands of computers that have to agree. All of them have to agree, I think, where XRP is a lot quicker because I think it's like 21 um, servers need to agree on the transaction and then there's lots of spare servers. So because it's a different model, it can be a lot quicker and a lot more free. Interesting. Very cool. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, it is very confusing technology, but it is like, I think it could be world changing. Yeah. And so within, yeah. within that, what is XRP? So XRP is one of thousands of different cryptocurrencies, um, but XRP is super quick and has no fees. So what that means is that from a micro payment point of view, you might get, you know, if I look at your content for a second, then you just might get like 0 0.0006 of an XRP in your wallet. And, you know, that's not very much money. It's not even a cent. Um, but if lots and lots of people do it and lots and lots of people spend time on your content, that really adds up. So I think, oh, I can't remember. Um, I think if, if I spend an hour on your content, then you get like 35 cents worth. Um, but if lots of people spend lots of hours on your content, that really adds up really quickly. Um, so yeah, so XRP is just one of the different types of cryptocurrencies. Um, it's super quick because uh, that consensus model that I was talking about um, basically means a bunch of different computers have to agree on you know, the official transaction and all those people are volunteers. So they've set up their servers because they really want this network to work really well. They've got a vested interest. So Coil has a server, different university have servers, uh, just random people have a server and they all have to agree on what the official transaction is. Um, so because they're volunteers, it means that it's completely free for me to send you money and vice versa. And that's why I can be so quick. Um, blockchain, uh, sorry, Bitcoin takes quite a bit longer because um, there's thousands and thousands of computers that have to agree. All of them have to agree, I think, where XRP is a lot quicker because I think it's like 21 um, servers need to agree on the transaction and then there's lots of spare servers. 
So because it's a different model, it can be a lot quicker and a lot more free. Interesting. Very cool. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, it is very confusing technology, but it is like, I think it could be world changing. Well, it's, I've, I've been getting excited as I've been watching. And then especially, you know, in some of the conversations people have been having too, where I realized that, oh, there's people who they make their living off of day trading, you know, yeah. between the different currencies and things like that. Yeah, which, which, which is fascinating. And I saw one day where I'm like, I'm like, maybe I should occasionally check on this because like <laughs> I saw one day where I think it went from from negative five, you know, sort of uh, where where it was compared to the US dollar to over like up tw over 12%. I'm like, oh, if I, you know, moved some yeah. money from one account to, to yeah, the I mean, I don't, I don't personally love that because I think um, so that so basically you make money through trading because of the volatility. So, yeah. and that's based on popularity and maybe news or fake news or whatever. Um, but personally, I would like to be a little bit more stable so that companies can be like, oh yeah, we'll accept Bitcoin for a Tesla. Um, and you know, if you wanted to train your Bitcoin for a Tesla, like you'd be buying like a $60,000 car with your Bitcoin but you might also know that, oh, a year later, that exact same amount of Bitcoin might be worth $100,000. So then did I just spend $100,000 on a $60,000 car? Like that's a question that people need to answer um, where if it was a lot more stable, then you'd be like, oh, I spent $60,000 worth of Bitcoin and a year later, it's still $60,000. Um, so yeah, I don't love the volatility, but I do love that it brings a lot of eyes to the community. Um, so it's mm -hmm. probably not a bad thing. I don't know. My mind changes on yeah, this all it the time. Yeah, it was just interesting. I was, um, you've got those drummers on the beach on GFAM who, uh, who I'm like, oh, oh yeah. Because I, I clued into the fact because of some of their posts that, that yeah. their job each day yeah. was kind of doing day trading and. Yeah. And now, um, yeah, I think, uh, so I think uh, Teresa is like one of the, the drummers and she was saying that like she's bought land in Nicaragua and crypto has helped her make that purchase, which wow. is incredible. And GFAM is a big part of that. Um, like you can, we've now um, uh, released like user profiles. So now you can click on someone's name and you can see like, oh, she's received like I don't know, 400 tips or something. So like, because she's been consistent with her posting, like she's received yeah. a lot, um, but she never would have made that on Instagram. So, you know, that's the comparison there. No, no. I mean, I'm, I've even been discovering the same thing with cinnamon. Like I yeah. weighed, made way more money from cinnamon than, than yeah. uh, first video I, I made do more. in a couple of months on YouTube. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And I like I had a very uh, popular Australian Ninja Warrior channel on YouTube um, that I don't know, has over 60,000 views or something. I don't know. It's got a lot of views. And I made zero money from that because um, it's a little bit of an awkward story. But basically, the channel that uh, runs Australian Ninja Warrior, they asked me to put content on my channel to help promote the show. Uh, and so they gave me um, like music and footage and stuff like that. So I did that, I put it on, got lots of hits, it was great. But then like with the DMCA strike down, someone's gone and claimed that as copyright, oh. even though it was like, they asked me to do it. And so I've made no money on my YouTube channel ever because someone else is making that money. And because YouTube is quite centralized, I can't fight them, they won't listen to me. Like. It's an argument I can't win because yeah. a bigger company has made that claim. Um, so yeah, my very first cinnamon video, I made more than I had in all my videos on YouTube. And lots of people, you know, there's lots of content creators that, you know, have done fairly well on YouTube, but any day they know that they might be struck down or they'll lose all of that or uh, Coindesk, which is one of the, the blockchain magazines, mm -hmm. had their channel completely deleted and no explanation no, they don't know why it was deleted all their stuff is just gone um, oh, that's, that's that's sad yeah yeah and you know it's a fairly common story on youtube and instagram and things like fiverr and like there's more kind of centralized things um there was a story of a voiceover guy called voiceover pete 
and he was like uh, working on Fiverr. He had all these gigs going. He was doing lots of voiceover work. And then they just like kicked him out and they kept all the money that he had made on Fiverr, which was thousands of dollars. And he couldn't get access to it um, because it's centralized, because it's a company, like they just wouldn't answer his calls anymore. There was nothing he could do. It created this whole big public uproar. And I'm not sure if he ever got his money. Um, we're using blockchain technology, like on GFAM, GFAM can't, if we suddenly hate you, there's nothing we can do. You've already received that money. Mm -hmm. You got that money three seconds after I sent it. So yeah. there's nothing we can do about that. It's already yours. So yeah, if voiceover Pete had used something like GFAM instead, he'd have his money, even if his account got killed. Interesting. And with GFAM, you so you've been you've been doing adding in some new features and some that I'm embarrassed to say I haven't noticed. <laughs> I, Surprise! I've been I've been I've been more offline this week. <laughs> or That's fine. Um, we're, but, we're always here for you, Erica. We're not going anywhere. <laughs> um, but so so, what are some of the other new features that you've kind of got coming down the pipeline? Yeah, so um, just in the last couple of days, uh, user profiles was a big one. So you can now click on a user, you can see all their posts, mm -hmm. you can see their other social media handles. So Coil, Cinnamon, Instagram, YouTube, we'll put on MG Social as well, which is another great website in the web monetization place. Awesome. Yep. Yeah. Um, and um, yeah, so user profiles, gated content, um, little things like verification, uh, which is something I was discussing with you about how do we know if someone is posting their content and not just stealing content from elsewhere on the internet. So verification will help us with that. Um, we're setting up a follow thing. So you can just follow the people that you care about, not mm -hmm. see everyone. That's kind of still in the works. Um, but yeah, we've got a lot to be excited about. Um, I'm actually hoping to maybe do another grant for the web grant to um, actually get smart contracts in. So smart contracts is a blockchain uh, function where if you think of like a contract, say you are like buying a house, right? And so you have a contract of sale, like you're gonna buy this house, it's gonna be in this, you know, um, amount of disrepair or whatever, these are the rates, all that sort of stuff. A smart contract is kind of taking all those elements and putting it in code on the blockchain and so as each thing is fulfilled, then the contract is kind of automatically kind of sorted out. So we're not sure how we might make this work on GFAM. I'm just really excited about the technology and GFAM is experimental. So mm -hmm. we can do whatever we want. Um, but, you know, maybe we'll make our own token. Maybe we'll make a GFAM token that people can trade amongst each other. And, or maybe they'll collect and swap for like, I don't know, NFTs or something, which is like images on the blockchain. Um, so yeah, that's something that we're looking at. Um, and then the other thing that I really want to explore is setting up kind of a side, um, a side uh, project that's that's in the GFAM space, where brands could basically kind of put in a gig that says, "Hey, if you." wear a Nike hoodie on your video, then we'll tip you blah, blah, blah. Um, and so people could see that and be like, oh, I can throw on a Nike hoodie. Um, and then they'll get those tips. So basically for brands to come on and say, hey, if you wanna help us, then here's our requirements and we'll tip you for that. Um, which might be a different way than just like advertising. Um, it's a lot more involved and it's, everyone's involved. So I don't know, that's something to explore. I haven't really thought about how that might work, but it's kind of a, an idea that I've got bubbling. Uh, what are some of the challenges that you've been running into along the way? Oh, so many challenges. Um, probably the biggest one is actually in your space. So GFAM is complicated and new users do have a hard time. Like they are, firstly, convincing people that it's not a scam has been really hard because people see like, cryptocurrency, blockchain, and they're immediately nervous. When I say like, oh, you just need to download this wallet. Everyone's like, whoa, wait a second. What are you trying to steal from me? Um, so, you know, that's a big, so there's a lot of education to happen in the space. Um, because I've got tips on GFAM and web monetization, I set them 
up as different options because I thought like, you know, we give people, we give power to the people, but a lot of new users get really confused by that. They're like, what do I have to spend $5 a month just to use GFAM? It's like, no, no, that, that's just an option. Like, don't worry about it. Um, so yeah, I need to get better at communication and trying to help people through the myriad of, uh, you know, options and stuff. Well, um, it's, yeah, it's, I mean, it's, I mean, that is the thing about the space is that, well, there's, it is, there's, I mean, GFAM, as far as um, posting and things like that, uh, I think it's something we're, we're all used to doing. Yeah. And this is a wonderful option to, you know, getting, getting uh, some remuneration for your content, but it, uh, even though we've been paying different companies like Netflix and things like that for ages to access their content, it's wrap people wrapping their head around of, okay, well, here's something that kind of actually opens things up for more creators to get yeah. paid for their content. And I mean, I know like for me, the whole reason why I started on that whole sustainable funding broadcast series is because I see so many people out there with so many great ideas that never do anything with them because they yeah. don't get the grant, um, yeah. because they don't get the broadcast deal, and or you know, and then they think that their content isn't worthwhile. Where, especially when we're talking broadcast, quite often yeah. their content might be more worthwhile. Right, but like if but, you think about like musicians. Um, you know, things like Spotify don't, um, don't pay very well. So my partner is a musician and, you know, like she's had bands in the, in the past that have done okay, but the amount of people that make that, the amount that people make off Spotify is terrible considering like how much content, how much their content is consumed. Where things like GFAM, like it allows people for, you know, they're not getting paid for their end product. They're getting paid for the person they are and, the process they go through and what they share. So we're hoping that people like musicians could share their processes and their struggles and their highlights and their journey on GFAM and basically get remunerated by that so that when it comes time to release the song, maybe they don't even need to because they're being paid the whole way through that process instead of being poor for months and then selling a product and getting that yeah. spike and then, you know, like evening it all out a little bit. Um, but yeah, there's so many platforms that really take advantage of people's content. And, you know, the people creating the content aren't the people making the money, which is kind of crazy, really. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it, it's why I keep getting more and more excited the more I'd be kind of exploring this. And, <laughs> and I, be, yeah. I, I, be, I just started to share the first little bit with my students this last week. Uh, and uh, I, you know, I just put everything out there and they decide to build where they decide to build. But I, it, it's always that thing when I'm excited about something, I'm like, oh, keep sort of slightly mentioning, oh, did you check that out? <laughs> <laughs> did you check that out there's a way over there yeah so if you think if you think about like uh i don't know facebook and instagram like i think they made billions of dollars last year like billions with a b mm -hmm. but they didn't create any of the content that people are consuming they just created the platform so that means millions of people are creating content that facebook and instagram have made money off not the people who created the content yeah yeah which, yeah, it's, uh, um, and it's, I mean, it's something that you, you sort of see constantly out there. Like I, I've been looking, it's, it's interesting because I see it going across a number of different fields where often, you know, whether, whether it's the film and television world or whether it's, you know, me with my education hat on or even me when I'm taking sort of marketing style contracts or whatever, the person that's actually creating the content seems to be the person that everybody wants to pay the least to yeah. and yeah, yeah. To treat them with the least amount of value. So it, it was, 
it's been kind of an uh, like I've, I've recently had a really decent contract doing so sort of strategy for a, for a science company and it uh it's been the eye opener because even in the discussions that we're having they start to say the way they're referring to the content creator as like this person that's like not the high thinking you know yeah and it's like okay you guys have this part of your problem and part of your problem is that you're hiring people who haven't got the skills yet or or like because you guys all think it's a kid's job and right one, and, one of the things that i sorry to, to cut you off no, go ahead. Um, one of the things that i really love about cinnamon video mm -hmm. is what you can do is you can split up who gets uh, percentages of that web monetization. So that means for like, say a musician uh, has donated their song to a video, you can then say like, oh, you'll get 10% of everything that video earns forever. Um, I used to work a lot with like photographers and models. And yeah. so often models would be paid like, oh, $200 to do a shoot, right? So their image is in the, in the photo. Um, and there's lots of other people involved, makeup artists and, and set designers and all that sort of stuff. And then the, co the company or the photographer sells that photo for like $10,000 or $100,000 and the model received $200, right? So like there's a lot of risk, obviously, like maybe the photographer won't sell it at all, you know? Um, but I think with this kind of technology, now that we can start to divide up who gets what, um, I think you get a lot less people being taken advantage of or missing out if something goes viral or whatever. Yeah. Um, it's just oh, way absolutely. more fair. No. Well, and it's, 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 it's awesome too. Like, you know, I know, uh, for example, we've got um, a soundtrack uh, that we, we created for romancing and yeah. our musician on that he, he was paid and he was paid what he wanted to be paid and all the rest of it but one yeah. of my hopes has always been that if you know if things take off more or whatever that we could pay him more whereas it, cinnamon actually makes that simple or it makes it simple if um you know uh we have a cinematographer i haven't shared our our um sort of we've got um an award-winning uh web series um from romancing as well that I haven't shared on cinnamon yet but uh with with our cinematographer who we plan to do a lot more of those sort of style web series with um I would love to be able to you know have Kelly make you know sort of almost additional um yeah. tips on top of or 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 royalties or whatever yeah, and yeah. cinnamon makes all of that possible and it and it's forever as well like yeah. so you know they'll get a percentage forever and that's kind of amazing like one of mm -hmm. the great things about creating content is that you're kind of always building so when you build a website like the more content you add the more eyeballs and you know people find older posts or they find their newer posts and the more you build the more audience you make and so like it's great to have the technology where you'll still earn off really old posts because people are still enjoying them. You know, mm -hmm. like I love that kind of, that part of the technology as well. Yeah, yeah. Deal. Well, and it's it's interesting too, because I, I, I also think about that like too as, um, so I'm the one with our business and stuff like that, that takes all the risk and, you know, pays the people. Yeah. But I would still love to, um, you know, in the case of, you know, when Lori's creating something or anybody on our team's creating something, if there's a way that even though I'm taking the initial risk and in paying everybody, if there's still a way that they can kind of make a little bit extra long term. Right. But hopefully one day you won't need to take as much risk because the negotiation will purely be, oh, you'll get 10% of the money this video makes forever. Yeah. And so the negotiation will be more about the percentage and you won't need to upfront funds because people will like, oh, I'm doing this and I'll, I'll receive money forever from that. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, it which work, it works, <laughs> works well all around. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, no, it's, it's, uh, it's, and now, now the, the big thing is, is what you've been doing all year exploring around this, like what you were doing last week is, is getting 
getting enough people to understand and sort of to buy into. Yeah, it's it's been really weird because essentially I'm offering a way for people to make money off their content and people are super skeptical about it, well, um, which is understandable, but it's like, it's like, come on, we just want to give you money. Just let us give you money. Well, and it's interesting because it's, I mean, I think some of it's tied to that whole sort of blockchain and yep. Bitcoin world that a lot of people don't understand yet. Yep. Um, Understandable. Myself, yeah. I'm still still wrapping my <laughs> head around everything. Yeah. Um, but then it's, and, and, and this is why, you know, I said to you, I mean, once you get to know people like you and Mateo, um, you guys are like two of the most lovely, lovely <laughs> guys and most helpful guys. And, and it's like, you almost need to, cause I mean, once people kind of get introduced into the community and get to know you, it's like, okay, I feel comfortable now, but you can't like, it's, I mean, that's a lot of work, right? Yeah. To, yeah. To and it's, it's not really scalable communities. No, it's not sustainable. Yeah. I mean, I think it's actually one of the really clever things that grant for the web has done is they've given out their funding to a lot of different types of people Yeah. in a lot of, you know, all around the world. Right. Um, um, so that hopefully, you know, those people can then advocate and, um, yeah. And help, uh, like help out, do it, help, help us do our work for us. Help their understand and, and also, you know, help their communities trust that this isn't something totally dodgy. Yeah. Um, one thing but that's I, the time. I really, I really love about Grant for the Web is that they've deliberately looked for traditionally disadvantaged communities um, that have traditionally missed out on capital and funding and stuff. And I think that's so clever. Like, not only is that the right thing to do, but I just think the scope of improvement in those communities, um, the scope of growth in those communities is so huge. It seems like the most obvious place to start. And yet, that have been ignored for centuries, you know, like, I, I think that's great. I love that that's a direction that Grant for the Web has gone in. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, they're, they're, yeah, there's so much there that yeah. uh, they've just, they've really approached in a, in a, in a brilliant, brilliant manner. Just uh, knowing, knowing that you've got to get to another meeting soon, is there anything else that you um, wish to share as far as, you um, what you're working on with uh, GFAM or or how 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 the community can can help you anybody who's listening who who, yeah. who wants to learn more or so I I would really love the community's help because the biggest thing that I've struggled with is essentially convincing people of how this all works so I would love to spend some time with some of the community uh, especially like people that are storytellers um, to basically essentially train them up on how to use GFAM and then for people to like spread the word. Like that's really the thing that I would find really helpful. There's a lot here. So I'd love to spend time on people just kind of like helping educate. Um, so yeah, if anyone who's interested, it is a brand new exciting world. I'd love to spend time with you. Um, I'm sure Erica will have some of my details, um, but yeah, just reach out. I've got time for you. You're the people that I really want to connect with. Uh, and then hopefully we can change the world from there. <laughs> <Not that. laughs> no pressure, no pressure. <laughs> well, thank you, Adam. I've no, greatly enjoyed this. Thanks, me too. It's always fun talking about this sort of stuff. And like, you're exactly the right type of person for GFAM. You're a storyteller. And I think storytellers are the most important people, honestly. Like, <laughs> that's how we transfer all our information and our morals and all that sort of stuff like it all comes down to storytelling so thank you for having me <laughs> um well on this note of mutual appreciation i'm going to <laughs> stop the record unless there's